forward to a real Good Friday treat as Reverend Anshan interprets for us the experience of this wonderful season, which includes Good Friday all the way, all the way to Easter. So help me to welcome Reverend Anshan. Thanks, Reverend Sonia. My greetings to all who are joining us on the World Wide Web on this good, good Friday. I want us to affirm together, it's strange enough, Reverend Sonia and I have a pattern where we pray before everything that we do. And even if something gets turned the other way, something always emerges that is helpful to all of us. I want us to affirm together, on page three, just right in the middle there, we will have a leader and congregation. We just use those two sentences as affirmations before I start, all right? You get it? The Christ spirit within me is the true source of all prosperity, and then the Christ spirit within me, all right? So we say it together, all right? The Christ spirit within me is a true source of all prosperity. Through the Christ spirit within me, I am resurrected into a greater awareness of God's abundant substance. Oh, and it's so true. It's the strangest thing. Good Friday, normally, growing up has such a solemn day for me. And I suppose most of us who have been brought up in, um, in that way of thinking, you know, the house is silent, no TV, no reading, no nothing. <laughs> so we just had to contemplate our neighbors, um, Reverend Michael, contemplate our neighbors on Good Friday. But coming to this teaching, I have learned how to look at the entire Easter season as one of spiritual significance to my own evolution. Practitioners Sandra Cooper and Vance Gardner at two recent Tuesday evening mind healing services have both urged us to consider the messages threaded throughout the Holy Week, that journey of Jesus, the way sure. So I will join my own reflections with that of Sandra and Vance. And it starts with this prayer created by a Frenchman by the name of Fenlon. Lord, I know not what I ought to ask of thee. Thou knowest what I need. Thou lovest me better than I know how to love myself. O oh, Father, give to thy child that which he himself knows not how to ask. I dare not ask either for crosses or consolations. I simply present myself before thee. I open my heart to thee. Behold my needs which I know not myself. See and do according to thy mercy. Smite or heal. Depress or raise me up. I adore all thy purposes without knowing them. I am silent. I offer myself in sacrifice. I yield myself to thee. I would have no other desire than to accomplish thy will. Teach me to pray. Pray thyself in me." End of quote. I think of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane with his prayer. Strange enough, it's only recorded in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but not in John. This is Mark's version. Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. End of quote. A very human Jesus way sure, much the same way for us if confronted with a very challenging situation. But I take heart from John 18 when Jesus responded to Pilate's question, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, 
that I may bear witness unto the truth, end of quote. Smite or heal, depress or raise me up. I adore all thy purposes without knowing them. I am silent. I offer myself in sacrifice. I yield myself to thee. I would have no other desire than to accomplish thy will. And to this Jesus said, to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I may be a witness unto the truth. No one in the midst of challenging circumstances declare, to this end came I to undergo this set of trying circumstances. But the truth is, in reflecting on the metaphysical behind the steps leading up to Good Friday, we are provided with an approach to deal with every situation in our growing unfoldment and evolution into the truth of our being. From as early as the Sermon on the Mount, we are taught by the way sure the power behind non-resistance. His quote is, but I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. The clear metaphysical meaning that what we resist, we give power to, is behind that one. So we switch our attention from the seeming challenges and concentrate our intentions on the revelation of the divine, God, or good, that must emerge from the issues we are confronted with. I have come to bear witness to the truth of my being. Remember that one my oneness with God, and the magnificence of that certainty and assurance when I can declare, pray thyself in me. Harefield in his metaphysical Bible states, for two millennia, the people of this earth have learned what occurred on that fateful day in ancient Palestine. However, there are differences between the traditional practices of crucifixion and that specific event. He tells of the method of capital punishment in the history of the Roman Empire. But he ends the history lesson with, could he have been still alive? Because when the soldier pierced Jesus' side with a spear, a deceased person could not bleed. But what Herefield states after this is food for thought. Whether he was or was not is, not truly, is truly not the issue. It is more about self-redemption, rising above life, and resisting the pull towards the lower aspects. It happens each time we go into inner conflicts. We can rise anew to face a new day, a new dawn, with a much stronger outlook. He wanted us to know and experience the feeling of climbing out of the darkness and becoming a new fruit of the same vine, end of quote. So my friends, every year, when we reflect on the significance of Good Friday, it must be with the intention that we arrive at a deeper understanding and awareness of ourselves. With the step up in raising of our conscious awareness of who and what we are, our divinity must be revealed to a larger extent or picturing as better experiences of life. It cannot be that we pay lip service to the symbolism surrounding the Easter story without paying attention to the messages enthroned in the experience because it is our story as we move forward into our resurrected true selves. Here he states, he continues with this quote, the Christ left us a legacy that pleads for us to seek and find the truth within ourselves. He suggested that we discover that kingdom within us and operate in the parameters of its higher principles to know that we could all indeed be like him should we earnestly remember, one, the message of love, the knowledge we are one with God, our souls are flawless, two, we are continuously in alignment with all creation, and we are worthy of any endeavor. But the truth is, it is up to us to live it." End of quote. So when we consider the idea behind Gethsemane, 
which is Greek for oil press, which it gets seminaries at the foot of Mount Olives. The metaphysical meaning is yes, as we press towards experience in that which is our, for our highest good, we press out that which does not illumine us or raise, us or raise our consciousness. So we press to ensure that what? We raise up in consciousness and we get rid of, by that movement, we get rid of what does not serve us. It is human to shrink away from the undesirable. But once we move into the mental state of surrendering to spirit's highest ideas of our experiences and its revelation through us, not giving up, but surrendering to the truth of who we are, sons and daughters of life itself, we also surrender to the new experiences of ourselves which beckons to us. It's like an onion. The truth of us is in the center of that onion. So every time we give up that which does not serve us, you actually peel off the onion skin to the outside. You know, when you're peeling it and you cut across it, right? You can see the rings, the radiating rings. So it's the same. So if you think of us in the center, that's what is, just, what is true of you, true of your life experience, as you peel off the outer ring coming right back to the center. This is what? Pressing out what don't serve us to allow what we are truly are to beckon to us. We arise, we get resurrected into who we are. So how do we do this? How do we stand on principle in the midst of pain, suffering, old worn beliefs, even the stagnation of what we perceive to be a good life? Jesus left us the steps through his words which were spoken through his transcending these seeming obstacles of crucifixion, which symbolizes the crossing out of all that belongs to the consciousness that impedes the coming forth of the Christ self. So you're crossing out. The first statement is taken from Luke 29, verse 34. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The importance of forgiveness is necessary, as it literally opens the way for access to the streaming of ideas, for the removal of mental blocks, strength to keep the mind changed to the desired state of being, Forgiveness allows love to remove any seeming separation from grace, giving up something for something that nourishes our spirit. Forgiveness of self and all other selves. Forgiveness gives us the platform to acknowledge our fears and move beyond them in the presence of an unconditional love that is in true, which is our true base. We are guided to give up the limiting belief systems that somehow narrow the field of possibilities because of how we view them through the old eyes of societal paradigms that place restrictions on the expansiveness of our true being. The reality of our divine heritage, forgiveness literally lets in the sunshine of truth. It saturates us with love and establishes that unswerving faith that assures us this too shall pass. So when our knees seem to buckle, the Christ consciousness within allows us to stay focused, clear in thought, to decide exactly what we want to feel and experience, and where to shift our intentions, and allows us to remain calm in the posture of change. The second statement, today you will be with me in paradise. Luke 29, verse 43. We now enter into the state of mind, the consciousness of peace and of wholeness, grace. Another word, paradise. This statement was said to one of the thieves beside him. The metaphysical insignificance behind the two thieves is that they represent the past and the future, duality, good and evil, and the I am Jesus, is in the midst. According to Fillmore, who wrote the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, he says the past is full of regrets and accusations, the old man in its perishable body, and the other 
the future, already sees the good, ready to accept the cup of a new spiritual focus and the embodiment of the truth of being, end of quote. So today thou shalt live with me in paradise. From the moment of acceptance of the new reality, something happens in consciousness. Our mental states reconfigure as the Christ consciousness now emerges as we cross out duality and move into oneness. The third statement, woman, behold your son, behold your mother, John 19, 26 to 27. Here it is suggested as we crucify, cross out the shackles of possessiveness, attachment to a way of being, stagnation, inertia, not wanting to maintain or expand our spiritual practices. Sometimes our priorities in the exterior world takes precedence out of going within to seek the kingdom and aligning ourselves to our authenticity as beloved of God. Even our spiritual integrity, sometimes when we see the, the things that are happening, it's difficult to remain steadfast, even though in that old hymn, the billows roll, but we are still to remain steadfast, allowing, not allowing our insecurities to shadow our spiritual eyes. We must keep our eyes single. We must remember that God is all there is, no matter how good or uncomfortable it gets. Because sometimes when it's, everything is good, you don't want to move, you, know, you don't want to grow. You just feel that, okay, okay, this is it. No, this is not it. The fact is that once we are here, we are here to expand into more of our being. So staying the same way, not when cut it. So you're going to have to shift. That is some of the times when we just have to understand that we have to move forward, no matter how we feel. The fourth statement is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Which by another translation should read, my God, my God, for this was I spared. This is my destiny. For this was I born. Every challenge is unique to the awareness of the individual experiencing it. May I say that again? Every challenge is unique to the awareness of the person experiencing. So when Jesus said, for this was I born, you think it was for him alone, you know. We say it every time we are going into a conflict for ourselves to move and to shift from one state to another. We say it too. So that set of circumstances is for us. It is our story. It is our way to reveal the truth of our being, to move forward, to shine forth as the power of God, the presence of God experiences itself through us. Our lesson is in that challenge. Our rising consciousness is from that peculiar set of circumstances. No one can learn our truths for us. No one can bear our cross and we sail through life. It don't work that way. We have to carry our own. Our overcoming is our crown of life, our crown, our new earth and our new heaven. So if God is all there is, then in the midst of it all, the I am must remain steadfast. Our challenge, as I said, is to persevere until the demonstration unfolds and bloom into our conscious awareness. The fifth statement is I thirst. John 19, verse 28. Another call to keep us steadfast on the path. We are spiritual, and yes, physically there needs to be attended, but the living waters of truth will sustain us. Our divine intelligence will fill us with the ideas necessary for our unfoldment. Yes, we thirst for a deeper experience and awareness of the presence of God within us. This simple act also of the soldier giving Jesus vinegar to drink is an act of mercy, which we ourselves must extend to all, no matter what challenges confront them. We too must be sensitive and offer spiritual food to our brothers and sisters. That spiritual food is unconditional and non-judgmental love. 
our faith must be so strong that a brother or sister may lean until they are refreshed in spirit. That is the significance of behind I thirst. The last statements are, it is finished, and Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. One is from John 19, verse 30, and the other one is from Luke 23, verse 46. True surrender to the process of unfoldment. It is finished. It is accomplished. I release and let go in complete faith that the God presence is in complete control. Victory is assured. I am triumphant in all circumstances. Renewal, regeneration has taken place and a new mental awareness is now being revealed to bless all concerned. The veil of separation has completely disappeared to reveal the reality of our being. I am one with God and all of life. This doesn't mean that when we surrender, you know, we become <sighs> clones. Hmm? And you just sit back and say, oh, it's, it's God will. That's not what, that, <laughs> what this means. It's a triumphant knowing that when you say, thy will be done, it's, it's to move into a greater concept of yourself. So, in conclusion, as we reflect on the journey of transcendence by Jesus the Christ, I invite you to journal or contemplate the significance of some of the lessons and to formulate a new of way of being. And today is a day when, we, um, when I said before an act of mercy, call somebody we have not spoken for a long time. Send a WhatsApp message. Just something to reach out to others on a very significant day like today. The truth is, it's thy will, thy will, that perfect life within us, that will that is being accomplished in, through, as us. That's what thy will be done. So as I said before, it's a higher concept of expressing life itself. You have now given way to spirit's highest idea for our incarnation to be revealed at the highest possible level for us to experience our own revolution, evolution, and revolution too for that matter. It has set the stage for a higher order of being, which will now be embodied in our nervous system, our DNA. This contributes to the refinement of each successive generation. The more we are refined, the generation after that comes up more illumined and enlightened. You see these children of today? I mean, a three-year-old is, I mean, what I used to do at three, it's a completely different thing from a three-year-old today. I mean, they are so off with everything and anything. It, it is, I mean, I will do the spiritual work if my great, great, great grandchildren are going to result into little geniuses or genius, whatever it is. So we must understand that when we refine our individuality, it is truly allowing God to experience itself in man as man. So it's when we stay in our church, life has set a step, stamp of individuality on us. It's not to make us different from everybody else. That's not what it means. It means that you are, the channel is so clear that more of that creative principle that is echoing throughout the universe, you have given it permission to experience more of that through you. So we are indeed enlightened beings illumined souls and that is the truth about what it means to crucify the old man and to rise resurrected into the new you. So we can say to each other, the Christ in me blesses the Christ in you. A little louder, I mean, really? <laughs> The Christ in me blesses the Christ in you. It's triumphant. Friends, we are special. We just didn't come here. God, I mean, Reverend Emma and Sister, God didn't just fling us down here and then put a devil down here. No, no, nothing don't go like that. <laughs> we were put here to be triumphant, to rise into the highest possible of experience of ourselves. Let me say a better version, not true. We are ready 
are it. We have entered into our spiritual magnificence. It's just that sometimes the, the little glasses that we have on want to clean. Yeah. So, namaste, friends, and enjoy this Easter. Yeah.